This is season number 19 of Bass Talk Live with Matt Pangrath. BTL is presented by Bass Cat Boats, Aftco, Strike King Lures, Sunline, Big Bite Baits, Spro, X Zone Lures, Gamakatsu, The Bass Tank, Denali Rods, and Pro Guide Batteries. Hit him with the hook, Jeffries. PTL coming at you. Good morning. And welcome to another exciting edition of BTL Bass Talk Live, where we are going to talk about bass fishing. Have a really cool show today. Uh, I've been meaning to get this guy on for uh, probably a little bit like six months. He, he shot shot me a DM. He said, hey, I hear you've been talking about the Bassmaster Open payouts and some of the payouts in, in fishing. He's like, I got this deal going on. Uh, and I'd heard about it. I know that uh, best on tour the newsletter had run some things on it i think uh when it first kicked off bailey and the guys over at serious angler uh had luke on to talk uh, about his project uh diehard tournament angler uh who's trying to make things better for those anglers at the triple a level all the way down through the bfls on both the boater and the co-angler side uh and there's been a number of these things that i've that that have kind of but for lack of a better term, they've kind of come and gone. And, and that was why I, I wanted to do some research before I had them on. But it is Side Pot Fishing's Luke Schrader. Luke, thanks for jumping on BTO. What's up, Matt? Thanks for having me. I'm a big fan of the show. I really appreciate everything you and Jeffries have done over the years. Yeah. Uh, and I appreciate what you're trying to do in the industry, too, because you reached out for me after by... I, I, okay, I didn't get this straight. I wouldn't call it a... It was a rant. Okay, it was a Bassmaster Opens payout rant. But I want to qualify that with I knew I knew what I was getting. Well, we, we didn't know. We actually signed up not knowing, but we knew what we were getting into, especially the 172 of us that are fishing all of them. So it's not a knockoff Bassmaster. Actually, they were like, holy cow, everyone signed up. We could, you know, we could give them a, uh, a hat and a hearty congratulations yeah. for the win. And there's really nothing you could do about it. But, uh, I've I've been hearing about this, and I uh, I I think John Garrett. I heard uh, Tyler Williams, bunch of guys that I've fished around at the opens, are doing this side pot fishing thing, and it's explain what the heck it is actually. Uh, I think a lot of us are familiar with side pots more at the local level. Your you know Wednesday nighter or whatever, where guys throw up some extra money. Uh, towards the pot. And that's basically what side pot is, except it's set up for every BFL in the country, every bass open, all the Toyota series, all the invitationals. And you just have to finish ahead of the other people who are in the side pot for that particular tournament. So you're still competing against everyone who's in the tournament. And let's say 10 guys enter the side pot in order to win the side pot. You just have to beat those other nine guys. So you could come in 20th place overall, but still be the highest placing finisher in the side pot and take home the first place prize. Uh, it doesn't pay just one spot. It breaks down depending upon the number of entries. Uh, it starts at a one in five payback and then eventually transitions to a one in 10. Uh, you can only wager on yourself. Uh, you cannot bet on other people. That'd be a Calcutta. Yeah. We're not, we're not gambling per se. Well, some would venture yeah. to say that bass fishing sure. in and of itself <laughs> is gambling Luke, but, sure. uh, sure. So this is the deal. I, okay, so I'm fishing the Keystone Weekend Series uh, with Bobby D, also known as Robert DeGraff and Reed, uh, this Sunday. Mm -hmm. And when we sign, we'll pay up, and then they'll say, hey, you want to get in the side pot? We'll be like, absolutely. I think the side pot's either like 20 or 50 bucks per boat. And then that's just the extra cash payout on the side that in most cases is – in the local stuff, I mean, heck, I think the side pop pays out like a grand and then the tournament pays out like $1,800. So this is basically the exact same theory, except it's the side pot for a Bassmaster yep. Open that I'm in. So it, I'm, I'm very, I'm very intrigued on this. We're going to dive into this later on uh, as the show goes on. But that's that's basically the crux of 
And and it started when January of twenty two. Yep. So we're a little over a year old. All right, we'll get into that. You in and of yourself are a diehard tournament fisherman though. And that's what I wanted to have a discussion with someone about, because I've been taking some emails and some comments that are like, Oh, the, the late Norman red crest was uh, spotted bass dock, spinning rods. Was it for me? And and I talked with Jody white who uh, self admittedly said he has an unhealthy obsession with spotted bass in Lake Norman, but I thought it was really freaking good. What are I your thoughts on it? it? Did you watch it? I did. I did watch most of it. Um, I really enjoyed it. I think it's really relatable for a lot of people throughout the country. I mean, unless you live in Texas or Alabama or maybe Oklahoma, the 20 pound bag isn't necessarily the norm for it. So for us guys from the Northeast, the Ohio's, you know, the areas of the country where the fishing's maybe not as good, um, you know, a 12 or 15 pound bag is still hard to catch. So, you know, I think it's relatable to what we do every weekend. I think that's lost in the fact that I mentioned this a little bit yesterday was they really listen to their anglers. And I think the fans, as far as the format for red crest. And if you looked at the interviews with thrift and Jacob Wheeler and Alton Jones jr. And Connell and all these guys who made that top 10, dude, they were freaking exhausted by the end of this thing. It was five consecutive days under all sorts of weather conditions, making it through three cuts, but still maintaining cumulative weight for three consecutive days to end the event, which I would remind you is exactly what is going to happen in a week and a half in the Bassmaster Classic. Cumulative weight, 15 bass after three days, except tack on two more days at the start of this thing at Redcrest. Like take, if you have a, a MLF bias, take that out of the equation. Five consecutive days, 40 angler field. Dude, those guys were whipped. Yeah, I know uh, even personally, like a two-day event is, is, is doable. But then once you get to three days, it really becomes like a marathon and it's hard to wake up that third day. So five days, that's really impressive. And, uh, and then, I'm glad to see them make the changes with the cumulative weight, both on the BPT, but also on the invitational side. So it's good to know that angler feedback's getting through. A hundred percent. So here's a couple other things that I really liked about it. They knew what the other guys had. Yeah. That is that is a a drastic element. And we were like, oh well, that might lead to uh to more risk taking. And who among us doesn't like to see someone else take a gamble, make a run, tie on a big chunk of wood? And I think we saw that with the majority of the field. Uh either throw in a big mag draft style bait or a glide bait, which is something that uh, the cumulative weight in the five fish limit and knowing that Brian thrift was in the lead or that Alton Jones jr. Had jumped out to a lead. Like those were two elements that I really liked about it as well. I mean, just watching guys take gambles, knowing what the payoff is instead of trying to guess. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I think they originally thought that they were going to lose some of that drama by eliminating the every fish counts format. But I think I would wager to say that it's probably more dramatic and it keeps everyone kind of in it to a certain extent. Obviously, Norman, you know, the ceiling might be like a six or seven pounder. There's only a few of them swimming around, but, you know, anyone can make a comeback, really. The more I watch Norman and I fished in open there, was it last year or 2021? 20, whenever they had, I think it was 21 when they had the Bassmaster open there and I, I had a good event I had a good event I finished in the top 25 but what I found about that place uh, and it was in the fall but these guys did it too there were have you ever fished Norman Luke uh, I've been there for one or two days dude there's magic docks on that lake yeah the, the dredge docks apparently or the juice yeah but even within the dredge docks there are certain docks that will harbor like schools of three to five pound spotted bass and i found like three of them in that bass master open i went through one in practice caught a a gorgeous four pounder off of it went back in the tournament and caught an ugly three and three quarter pounder off of it so i knew it was a different fish right. Then I went back on day two. I caught a 12 incher and I couldn't figure out what was special about this dock. It just looked like every other dock that was dredged out. And I pulled 10 spotted bass between three and five pounds out with that 12 incher. And I did that on numerous docks. It's crazy how just certain docks have schools of giants underneath it. And, and Norman's like the only place I've seen that that is like that. You fish a hundred of them and then like one of them and they'll live on that dock, I guess indefinitely 
Yeah, I don't know. Those spots do seem to group together maybe a little more than largemouth. And I'm sure Brian Thrift has all those docks waypointed by now. I thought it was cool. Uh, Thrift did not have his limit until late in the uh, into the second period on the final day and actually ran up the river, which is something that uh, that he really hadn't done all week. We've seen a lot of guys stay down like the wacky rig, the jerk baits and stuff, uh, and threw a chatter bait. So it was thrift on the bait that he kind of put on the map mm -hmm. on the lake that he considers his number one a plus prime rib lake blowing the field out and then the other thing that stuck out to me was uh we had casey ashley on uh a little over a month ago on btl and i wasn't even planning on going into the x's and o's with casey and he went he did like a 20 minute little seminar on shaky heading and I know he caught some on a jig, but he caught the majority of his weight over those five days on a shaky head, and it was cool to see him go to work with a freaking shaky head. Yeah, I'm a big shaky head guy myself. I actually listened to that Casey Ashley interview, and I'm still using the screw lock, so I haven't really figured that out yet, but I know he's big anti-screw lock. Yeah, which screw lock are you using? Uh, I think the big bite one, actually. Okay. With it, well, that's got a good Gamagatsu hook in it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I kind of go back and forth. There's there's a, on a bigger worm, like on a, a fat worm or a trick stick style bait, I still use a screw lock. But I, man, I literally like reevaluated some of what, how I was fishing because of that Casey Ashley interview. Yeah. And I have to say at uh, Ufala at this most recent Bassmaster Open, I had not legitimately like consciously thrown a shaky head, like on the ball head sure. with the six inch worm light in years like i just i had i honestly had not done it it had either been the the necker rig or a short drop shot or a ned and i thought it had eliminated the need for the shaky head i caught three of my 10 way fish on a straight up casey ashley shaky head uh you follow and two of those were my biggest fish of the of the week so uh, I'm getting ready for Toledo Bend. God, I, if I'm throwing it at Toledo Bend, we're in trouble. But but we've got Bugs Island. We've got some tougher fisheries. Yep. I have completely built a new shaky head box, and it is back in the boat for the remainder of the year. It's got a bigger hook than some of those other finesse tactics. So I feel like you can throw it on a 12-pound leader and hit them pretty good and get them out of where you need to. Yeah, that's good. So you, you've got an interesting – dude, you're all over the map. I am. Like I'd heard about, I knew who you were, but as I started to do research, when you came on a little pre pre show meeting, I was like, now where do you live and what exactly? And you're like, well, I'm in Wisconsin now, but I'm from the East coast, have a deal in New Jersey, but recently moved to Kentucky. Is that right? That That's right. Um, I feel like fishing the MPFL that first year sort of started a whirlwind that, that hasn't really stopped yet. Um, I sold my house in New Jersey at the time and basically lived out of my truck for like eight months uh, that first year fishing the MPFL and then really haven't like settled down into a particular spot yet. Um, I got to fish a lot of the country. I own a house in Maryland still, but I rent that out almost full time. And then I recently bought a place uh, just near Cumberland in Kentucky. So a little closer to the fishing mecca there. It feels great to be within like three or four hours of almost every major lake. So yeah, you spent a lot of time on Cumberland yet? Uh, not yet. Handful of days, fish maybe two local tournaments. Dude, I love that place. Anywhere you can, anywhere you can do spots, smallies, and largemouth in the same fishery outside of the Ozark region, there's not very many fisheries that you can that you can really target all three of those species and and have a winning tournament bag with a mixed bag. Yeah, I feel like that's kind of the way to go is the mixed bag. I'm trying to think Cumberland. Like, if I was to name the top five, I think Texoma would have to be number one as far as a mix mixed bag lake. Yeah. Smally spots, large mouth. Table Rock's uh, gonna be up there. What's that? Table Rock would have to be up there too. Uh, yeah, I, I think Table Rock would have to be number one. Yeah. If you're looking just for pure size, though, like you're more likely to catch a three pound spot, a five pound yeah. small mouth, and a six pound large mouth on Texoma. And but spots typically don't play that much. But yeah, Table Rock is definitely on that on that list. Uh, I would put I would put Cumberland in there. Uh, and then surprisingly, uh, 
Eufaula in Oklahoma, where the NPFL is going, the Toyota Series is going, and the Bassmaster Opens are going all in the same yeah. year. <laughs> uh, I, I think you're going to see uh, a lot of mixed bags at Eufaula, but unless like I'm Eufaula, Alabama has some better spots than average now too, and same thing happened into Gunnersville. I see a lot of three and four pound spots coming out of Gunnersville yeah. these days. Dude, I had no idea like that that existed in Eufaula, yeah. Alabama. It was a weird deal for me because. I was trying to wrap my head around, okay, we're literally connected to Seminole, like through the mm -hmm. dam right there. So it's like a Florida fishery in some ways. You could stay on the top end and punch and grass yep. and all that. But then it turns into like a what felt like more TVA-ish down on the bottom end. And then on day one, you know, I pitch it, my drop shot up to a dock post with like 30 minutes left. And it's like, zoop, zoop. And I'm like, ah, it's a catfish. And it's like a three and a half pound yeah. spotted bass. Bonus. And I, I mean, just a blimp. And I'm like, where in the heck did this thing come from? And then you see some of the weights. I think Kent had like three, three big spots in his 19 pound bag. Really, yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's a sneaky good spotted bass. Like, and at Gunnersville, you're right. Especially when you get down towards that lower end in the dam and some of the bluffs, you're seeing some, some bigger spots and an occasional small mouth out of, out of Gunnersville yeah. as well. Yeah. So, uh, all right, but let's get back to it. So you are, uh, you fished that inaugural year of the NPFL. I did. Is that where the, I guess, genesis for side pot fishing kind of originated where you kind of started thinking about uh, ways to help these, for lack of a better term, triple a level anglers that aren't competing on the BPT or the Bassmaster elite series. Pretty much. Um, I would say it was after that first year, looking at the second year and just kind of weighing my options as far as what was out there and what was available and really starting to do the numbers to, you know, to see what is worth it, for lack of a better term. And then was kind of surprised slash appalled, shocked or whatever, when you really start to dig into the math and look at some of the numbers on this. And it's interesting that not many people are really talking about it. Um, you hear people sort of complain about the constant, the idea that the payouts have gone down over the years, but numbers are still way up on all these circuits. I mean, the Toyota series gets over 200 boats. The opens obviously filled up. BFLs are doing great and it's more expensive than ever to compete, but you're really competing for a lower prize. Do you have any of those numbers? I think you were throwing some percentages out at me before where I was like, really? I, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, I did. Um, I went ahead yesterday. I did all the math. Anyone's welcome to fact check me on any of this. Uh, but the Bass Opens, as advertised on the website, we'll start there. Uh, based upon 200 boats, it is 71% payback, which I don't think that the payback number necessarily resonates with everyone. But to put that into perspective uh, of the $1,800 entry fee you pay, 1,278 of that goes towards the actual prize payout. And five hundred and twenty-two dollars would go to Bass as a operating fee, glorified membership fee, whatever you want to call it. I'm pulling out my calculator on my phone, and I know it is. I mean, especially with what Bass is doing this year on the open, so they have a massive overhead just to cover with all yeah. the photographers and all that. So, yeah, they have a business to run too. So, so let let's just say do it based on two hundred, which is rough. Dang, that's 104,000 bucks. Uh, yep, I have it as 105,000 written down on mine. Wow. Do you have that for the invitationals or the MPFLs or any of that I stuff? Do. Um, so at the invitationals, you're looking at 82.26%. Uh, oh, wow. And the NPFL is a little tricky because it has a championship event. So you kind of have to retroactively add that championship money back in. Uh, on an individual tournament basis, the MPFL would be 71.28% payback. But when you factor in that 250000 total that they give away to the 25 anglers, sort of divide that by six tournaments, add that into the tournaments, uh, it'd be looking at 81.96% payback when you factor in the championship money. And when you factor in the angler of the year money, it goes up to 82.28%. Okay, so it's roughly. It's, it's almost roughly identical to the invitationals on the say of the invitationals for 2023, the one that they got dinged for for their payout restructuring. Yeah. Okay. It's almost, it's almost identical to the NPFL with our 
100K first place. It's just distributed a little bit differently. Now we're getting into the meat. This is the stuff I find interesting. All right. What about the Toyota series? Toyota series based on 160 boats uh, would be 71.3% payback on an individual tournament basis. Now they have a championship as well. So you need to sort of do all the math on that. So what I did is I added up all of, or I added up the championship money and then divided it by 18 events because there's 18 regular season Toyota series events. And then that comes to $30,000 per event. So you add that back into the payout and it brings it right around 80%. So that seems like kind of the standard, especially if you add the, the, uh, championships and angler of the year payouts and all that 80 percent are there any others that you ran the numbers for i did i ran it for uh for the bfls and that's all right hit us with it really starts to get ugly um for for an average bfl based on 200 boats they bring in forty four thousand dollars total paid in now if you fished any sort of mlf tournament recently you know that there is a three percent credit card fee that seems to be relatively unavoidable so I think we need to factor that into the entry fee. So it's like over it. forty-five thousand paid in and thirty thousand paid out. So that brings you to sixty-eight percent payback before the credit card fee. But when you factor in that three percent credit card fee, you're looking at sixty-six point one percent payback for an individual BFL. Now so they have a, you, you have a chance to go on to a regional and then the All American. You do. So you're fishing for something a little greater, but I guess you mind. are in the opens too. You're fishing for the classic. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. 60. Wait, wait a second. BFL 66%. Yeah. So of your $220 entry fee, uh, $149 and 60 cents goes towards the payout. Now, Keep in mind, wow. it's also a $95 membership fee for the year. So I did the math on, let's say you're on va- going on vacation and you want to sign up for one BFL. Uh, it would cost you $321.60, I believe, to fish that BFL and still $149.60 of that would go to the payout. So if you just want to fish one BFL, you're looking at roughly 46% payback based upon your investment. Luke, that's not good. It's not good. I mean, unless you're Sean Goodwin or Dickie Newberry. No, I mean, there's always the hope that you're going to win. We're all all chasing that carrot. But when you get down to the finances and just the rationality of it all, it it doesn't necessarily make sense. All right. So I think we all we all assume like that we're we're working our way up the competitive ladder. But I bring it all back to like the 80 percent open buddy that's down at your local lake. That's a charity or a fundraiser for a club you know, that's 80% payback and you get to sleep in your own bed. You know, that, that really becomes a much better value when you start to break it down. All right. So industry standard based on what you would say is around 80% payback now, maybe lower, but yeah. Okay. So here's my question. And I don't know if you have these numbers or not, but, but what, what, uh, <clears throat> what grinds my gears is, the depth of the payout field i feel like optically Mm -hmm. it it may not be as much but you're looking at a what you said a 71 point uh two eight percent in the opens with a 71.3 in the toyotas roughly jumping that to an 80 percent payback in the toyotas when you factor in uh the championships and all that but it seems to me like the toyotas pay way deeper into the field than the Bassmaster opens do. Bassmaster is top 40. Doesn't matter if 41 show up. Yeah. Doesn't matter if they max out at 230. They're just paying top 40. Toyotas, the to- Toyotas, Toyotas, though, pay based on the percentage of how many anglers are in the field, right? That's correct. Toyotas pay one in four, so 25% of the field. Mm-hmm. BFLs pay one in five, which would be 20% of the field. And then Bassmaster. So if there's 230, which is what there what there is, they just base yep. it on 200. But there's 230. That's 17 percent of the field. Yeah. And then what did the what's the MPFL? 
Is that a slide? Is that per angler too? Paying twenty out of the seventy-five or seventy-eight that they have, so it looks like they're paying great, better than one in four, closer to one in three and a half almost. And you said BFL's twenty percent. It's 20%. just not not very much. I mean, you're doing that whole thing like, hey, I cashed a check, and you're barely getting your entry fee back. Yep, yep. The last check is actually less than the entry fee. So, so what? I'm just comparing all these. I find this stuff interesting. And I'm as a triple A level angler, I'm shocked that I didn't have all this stuff mapped out before. Cause if I'm spending all of these tens of thousands of dollars every year, you'd think you would want to know like where it's going, right? Like yep. and we're not ripping on any organization. These are just cold hard facts. Yep. Uh so you're you're what and then what's the invitational? Invitational, I think, pays the top 40 or 50. I'm not sure. I have to look it up. I think Here. it's the top 50 we'll out of 150. Up. We'll look that up right there. Let's do uh, results. Let's do Tackle Warehouse Invitationals 2023. Let's look at Clark's Hill. 150 anglers in that. They paid the top the top 50. Yeah, so one out of three. One out of three. So... By far, the Bassmaster Opens is the lowest payback Yeah, as far as percentage of what you're getting back. Now, what you are getting in the Opens is if you do finish in the top 40, you are actually breaking even and making a little bit of money because I believe that the payout for that 40th place was over $3,000. I want to say it was like $3,400 for yeah, 40th place. About accurate. If you go to... the most recent Toyota series that was the 16th on Gunnersville. It paid down to 65th place, but that last place check in 65th was only 2000. So mm -hmm. if you're on a $1,500 entry fee, plus whatever you want to have for credit card fees on it and, yeah. and membership, which bass has that too, you are basically just covering your entry fee back. And then you're all the way up to, to where you hit the, the, 3400 mark you're Almost, all the way yeah. up in uh the top 20 yeah whereas yeah like i said the bass you're you're making a little bit more and then uh and then only the top seven hit hit ten thousand dollars matt did you happen to look at the co-angler payouts for the open Ooh, no i'll do that next i might fuel your fire a little bit i thought it was interesting that they paid 40 co-anglers out of 116 that's what I'm saying. With Bassmaster, it's 40. It doesn't matter who shows up. It's yeah. 40. It's always 40. Yeah, and I'm all for paying as many spots as possible, but that might be a little bit too much, actually. Yeah, so wait. Their pro payout is like almost 1 in 6, and the co-angler payout was like 1 in 2.5. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. It is. Pairing all these, we're talking evenly about the MPFLs, the major three, the MPFL, the MLF, and the Best Master Opens. All right, let's look at this. Let's look at the tournament results. You follow results, co angler. And that's what a, a uh, is it $400 entry fee? I think it's $475, but I could be wrong. Okay. Yeah. So, For 40 out of 117 got paid. Yeah. But in one in in, three. yeah, in order to uh, make your money back, you had to finish in the top 25. And then it still paid 13, 3, 2, 1, 7, 1, 6, 1, 5, 1, 4, 1, 3, 1, 2. So a uh, thousand bucks down to 12th place. Which is um, over double your money. Yeah. Interesting. So that's kind of where, that's kind of where all this is is coming from. And I'm going to tease this. We're going to take our first break of the show. When we come back, that kind of sets the table for diving into side pot. And full disclosure, I'm not a sponsor of BTL. I this is the I mean I've talked to you on Instagram and social yeah. media and stuff but like I said I've talked to uh Tyler Williams I knew that John Garrett had it I've talked to a couple different guys uh about it and was like dude I need to start dropping 200 on each one of these Bassmaster Opens and then you look at it and uh 
uh, the more guys you get into it, the higher the payback is. Yeah, I think if all the anglers could sort of, you know, gather around it, I think you'd see pretty an incredible impact, really. Any other numbers before we get into the uh, groundwork of side pot that you put together that our listeners might find interesting? Uh, I think that's pretty much everything I had in my notes. All right, good stuff. We're going to take our first break of the show. It is Tuesday, March 14th with Luke Schrader from Side Pot Fishing. We'll be back right after this. The new Puma STS has been redesigned from the ground up. With the angler, design, function, and performance in mind, nothing on this new offering was compromised, and the only thing carried over from the previous version is the name. Based on the soft touch series hull that started with the flagship Jaguar, this new model is nimble and performs incredibly well at all speeds with either a 250 or 300 horsepower engine. Featuring a new 96 inch wide body footprint, this hull measures out at 20 foot 7 inches in length. Industry leading design coupled with tournament winning performance. The Puma STS from Basscat. Feel the rush. A two sandwich eating kind of man. And on behalf of all of those bigger, I gotta say it once and for all. It's bad enough that the fish look smaller in our hands. The last thing we should have to worry about is getting quality outdoor clothing that fits. Avco, any fish, any water. Elite Series Pro Daryl Gleason here. My Pro Guide batteries keep me going on those long tournament days and long practice days. Always plenty of juice, never fail. The best part about Pro Guide batteries, it's the people behind the company. They have over 40 years experience in the battery business, keeping all of us fishermen out on the water longer, catching more fish. Check them out at ProGuideBatteries.com. What's up, Bass Talk Live fans? Brandon Polinick here. And ever since I won a couple Bassmaster Elite Series events on X-Zone Lures, I've been getting a bunch of questions of what makes them so special and different. And really, the truth is, it's in the details. The little details, things like no cheap fillers in their plastic, that gives you more lifelike action, more realistic and vibrant colors. But don't just take my word for it. Go to www.xzonelures.com and check them out for yourself. Are you looking to install your own fishing electronics? The solution is the Bass Tank Power Harness. It takes the guesswork out of installation. No more voltage issues or interference. Designed by an engineer so that you can get professional results right there in your own garage. Installation done right with the help of the Bass Tank Power Harness. You can feel confident knowing that your installation was done right. The Bass Tank Power Harness. Give us a call or order yours today at thebasstank.com. Get the best patterns back by tournament data. Start by finding the best 10% of your lake. Know exactly what to look for and what to throw. After that, you just put them in the boat. Try the Deep Dive app today. Look at that beast right there. All right, welcome back, BTL. On a Tuesday, talking triple A numbers with Side Pop Fishing's Luke Schrader. And I would like to point out, and as I have pointed out on multiple uh, BTLs before, that all these organizations are for-profit organizations. We're not talking about nonprofit here. I fully expect them to make a, a profit. In fact, I want the organizations to make a profit because the more profit they make, the better they are, the more they put back into the anglers, the more they establish us as brands. It's a delicate, it's a delicate dance, right? Yeah. Because you have you have some anglers that are just there to to straight make money on tournaments and we're fishing for 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 each other's money i mean the bpt tried the no entry fees and all that dude they're paying an entry fee now in in tournament fishing from the dot of time when ray scott started the thing it's show up put your money down and take your buddy's money because you caught more fish than him it's a it's a beautiful thing we all know exactly what we're signing up for but then there's also and i would fall into this category where you know i make my living in the industry a portion of that is through the tournaments i don't make any money uh, very, you know, on every year, like I'm not turning a profit on straight earnings. 
right? So I want that organization to be robust, to be healthy, to have the funding, to have those photographers there, to have the highlights, to have the shows, to show my value, to get it out to the view. So it's a, it's a delicate, it's a delicate dance between the angler and the organization and the payout and the structure. Yep. So this is kind of where side pot comes in because this is completely independent, not associated with any organization, correct? Yep. Uh, fully angler owned and operated, as I say, but, you know, it's pretty much just me. It's a one man band. I handle everything myself, whether it be building the website, updating the website, social media, responding to email inquiries, anything like that, mailing out the checks. That's all me. All right. Have at it. What 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 exactly it is? I've got it pulled up here. I'll share the screen. Uh, it, and let me see what I got here. We've talked a little bit about it, but. Basically, it's what two hundred bucks, or does it vary on what the entry fee is per event? It varies uh, depending upon the tournament. So it's two hundred dollars for a boater at the Opens, Invitationals, or Toyota Series level. Uh, it's a hundred dollars for either a boater or a co-angler at the BFL level, and a hundred dollars for a co-angler at the Toyota or Open level. So there it is right there. Bass Opens, Invitationals, MPFL, Toyota Series, BFLs, ABA, ABT, Bass Nation, College, Kayak, and then other side pots. Oh, Minnesota Bass Series. Yeah. So if you fish any one of those, you are eligible for side pot fishing. That is correct. And once again, you're only competing against other people who are in that exact tournament as you. All right. So co-anglers and boaters. This is also key so 100 yep. bucks like on a Bassmaster open side for a co 200 for a boater let's do a bfl because there's way more people that listen that do bfls yep so they're all sorted by division there and i've tried to make everything as simple as possible so anyone can sort of figure it out uh there is no membership required i think that's maybe like the misconceptions that people have there is no commitment you literally just sign up for that particular side pot for the tournament that you're fishing okay so if i'm fishing the the BFL Archie division. Yep. Uh, and I'm fishing DeGray Lake on the 25th. Yeah. I literally just go in, click it. Mm -hmm. It has the payout down here. Yep. And how long? So this is the other thing. You can actually sign up for this like during practice if you get on them. You can. Uh, you could actually sign up the morning of. I'm pretty much closing registration before the tournament starts. In theory, uh, I'd love to close registration earlier to sort of eliminate that practice factor. Uh, I think we talked about it a little bit behind the air or before um, mm -hmm. just in regards to how practice and your preconceived notions can sort of you know dictate how confident you are. And I think we're all probably experienced to know now that your practice really does not dictate how your tournament's going to go. So some people That's will not true. sign up for the side pot because they had a not so great practice. And then they end Dude, up. I did that. Tournament. I a hundred percent did that. So at Lake Eufaula, horrible practice ended up. Uh, I would have finished out of the entries in side pot. I would have paid $200. Mm -hmm. No, no registration fee or anything. Right. Correct. Yep. That all comes out of my pocket. It would have literally just been $200. Yep. And I would have gotten $383. Pretty much. Yep. And you would have been second out of six guys. I would have out of six guys. Yeah. So I would have made 180 bucks, which would have been my fuel for the entire tournament. Yeah. And the only reason I didn't was because I didn't sign up. Yeah. Okay. So let's get back to this uh, BFL here. So then this is uh, 90%. Oh, that's better than any of the paybacks in the uh, entire organizations so it's, it's a 90 is that a 90 percent payback across the board regardless yeah, of which 90 percent across the board it's pretty much the best value that i think you can get in in modern tournament fishing one to five one angler paid six to ten two anglers paid 11 to 15 three anglers paid and then it has the percentages next to it all right here yep and then and then as you go up in anglers the percentages go down a little bit as far as how much the winner gets proportionally, yeah, because it gets distributed throughout the field, but it's still based upon that 90% feedback, uh, 90% 90 payback, but like, you know, one in five. Okay. So you're pay. So let's say, okay, I've done all the math here. Let's say I am spending 
30 I spend about $3700 per open between my $1800 entry fee, my room and board, food, yep. gas, lodging. It's right averages around 3700. This is just 200 additional dollars and now I have the potential for well, what are your sample payouts right here? Hold on. So I have, you could bring that up for everyone. But let's say 200 guys actually decided to do it for the opens. Everyone decided to back the concept. You'd be getting an extra $14,000 for first, uh, an extra 6000 and change for second, 3000 and so on. So for a min minimal, what is it, like less than 10% more investment overall, yeah. you're looking at like potentially... 25 to 50% more winnings. Wow. And then in a BFL, so if a hundred guys did it at a BFL, you're basically winning as much as you would win in the BFL. Yeah. <laughs> On the side With pot. Half of the entry fee, more than or less than half of the entry fee, because it's a hundred dollars for the side pot and 220 to get the tournament itself. All right. Here's my here's my uh question, Luke. You mentioned, I think, what, six guys signed up for the You Follow Open. Why have not more guys jumped on board on this? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I think as an angler, I can totally sympathize with there's a lot going on right before the tournament. I think a lot of people just generally forget. Uh, I'm not really a salesman or I don't want to be too pushy, so I don't want to be reminding everyone or feel like I'm swaying people to enter the side pot uh, when in reality, maybe they just genu genuinely forgot to enter. Uh, I think there are maybe some trust issue factors based upon some past incidents that have occurred in the industry. Uh, if you don't know me personally, I can sort of understand that. But I think being in the industry and being so involved and fishing so many tournaments still, uh, I would think that it sort of eliminates some of that. Yeah. And like I said, I don't I mean, I, we're not like buddies, but I do know people who have gotten this side pot payouts yeah. and you actually like show what you're mailing out. I follow you on social media and stuff and have the payouts and, and the pictures for every single one. So, I mean, I'm going to sign up for the Toledo Ben, uh, Bassmaster open that starts on the 13th. It, it seems like it, I mean, dude, if you get like 20 guys in it, you're paying 50 per. So like, let's say, what would the payout be if 20 guys signed up? Let's say you could get 20 guys from the opens that signed up. Cause you're paying, uh, four spots out of 20 then. Right. Yeah. I'd have to do the math real quick. Cause I'm looking at the 3,600 would be the total purse but I'm not sure what the breakdown is for first place. So it'd be 50%. So you'd get 1800 bucks then if you beat those other 20 guys. And you could finish in 20th place if the 19 guys finish behind you. You could. I think there's definitely a misconception that you need to be at the top of the leaderboard to win the side pot. And I have written people checks for 100th place finishes. So, I mean, Dude, if you this look makes at sense. The, like, the last you think open, if you're in it, you want more guys in it to have – more spots paid at a higher percentage. So if you have a good derby, you're making more money. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you could look at the last open Tyler Williams won it and he came in 26th overall. So there's 25 guys who missed out on basically a thousand dollars by not signing up for the yeah. And like I said, I missed out on it because I finished 47th overall and I would have been the next finishing yep. highest side pot signed up angler. Yep. All right. I think it's cool. I think it's a, uh, I think it's a great way to add, and it, and I think it's a great way to add uh, maybe some extra money to your pocket. I mean, this kind of was based on you fishing the MPFL and fishing at the open level and the Toyota level and all that, and being like, dude, we yeah, need I don't to have a side pot. I don't want to fish for seventy percent of my own money. Is the reality of the situation. Yeah, I do agree with Clay. There's a couple guys that I really don't want to know about this. <laughs> that are all seem yeah. to be always at the top. Yeah. That are always at the there top. There are some of those guys that do know about it and they still don't sign up. So I don't know. <laughs> uh what's your plans for fishing? I said you've you've it says you fish over four hundred events, which is like twenty five a year since two thousand six. So you're a derby junkie. 
Yeah, I used to fish every weekend and still probably do. Um, last year, I fished just the Northern Opens. This year, I'm actually fishing the Central Toyotas as a co-angler. So I got Lewis Smith uh, in a couple days. Um, probably going to fish some BFLs as a boater as well. Um, trying to get involved with the Bass Nation again. I was really involved with that. In New Jersey, I made the Bass Nation Championship one year. Really loved what, what they did back in the day. Obviously, that's not quite the same now. So we'll see how that all shakes out. But I think it's you still... Don't, you don't fun. like it. You didn't. I didn't get a great vibe. You're not a huge fan of the new Bass Nation format? or uh, I like it. I just think it's... Uh, I guess it's more inclusive. Um, but that also makes... I don't know, less special when you get there, if that makes sense. So I no, think that's, for that's someone who wants to sort of cherry pick or wants to compete in some other tournaments, I think it makes it easier. So, No, 100%. For a guy like me, it makes it easier to sign up and then try to get to the yeah. regional and then the national championship. But at the same time, I like the standardization across the country uh, of, hey, this is you could still do however you want to make your state team to get your numbers, yeah. but then you can fish those regionals. You can make the national champ. Yeah. The national championship. I, you can said you've been there. What year did you go? I think it was 2019. It was on. Paper. Okay. Yeah. So you were after, so I made it in 16 and 17 and it was, I would say like right at the start of where you stopped, like getting the Royal treatment. Like it yeah. was still great. They had the dinner and we got, you know, I got a jacket and a, but you talk to those guys who did it in like the, 2000 to 2015 even before especially before the split with the tbf and it was like dude you know you felt like a freaking king when you went to that thing you just walked cool. out with just swag swag packs i think those days are done i mean you know the days of the plaques you're gonna have 250 guys in the national championship now but my thing with that is man you got to be in it to win it you do you and do. and i mean i'd rather be in it with 250 boats than not in it with 60 right yeah, i agree so anyway, all right. Uh, if people want to want to ask you more questions, if they want more information on this, want to pick your brain before they sign up or anything, uh, it's just sidepotfishing.com, right? Yep. Yep. The website's it's super easy to navigate. Uh, my cell phone number is listed on there as the business phone. So feel free to call or text me at any time. Happy to answer any questions. Uh, one of the obstacles I know I've been dealing with is you get a lot of how many people are entered in it questions. Yes. Um, and you'll know as a fisherman, we all tend to sort of wait till the last minute to do things. So the majority of the entries end up coming in like the night before when guys are laying in bed. So, you know, any ability to sign up a little sooner really allows me to sort of hype it up or, you know, build, build the hype about it. Well, I'm going to give it a shot. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, I hate to just shake it, my head at $200 and act like it's nothing. But in the reality, it's kind of a drop in the bucket compared to how much else you're spending. And you're competing for 71% of your money. So for you to invest a little more at 90% when you already have all of these sunk costs, like your travel expenses, you know, I think it really makes sense. I know I've left, I left money on the table at Hartwell. Uh, yeah. John Garrett finished ahead of me. And then I also, uh, I think I potentially left some money on the table at, uh, Sam Rayburn had a, like a 30th place finish there. And then, so like three out of my last five, and then you add that up, that'd be like six, 700 bucks. So, yeah, I think it really has the potential to sort of transform the industry. I mean, you can look at the BFLs and if everyone just signed up for the side pod, you'd basically be fishing for $14,000, you know, for the, the $7,000 you'd win in the side pod and the $7,000 you'd win um, in the regular payout. And you'd be paying a $300 entry fee total. So there's not many opportunities where you could, you know, win 14 grand or on a $300 entry fee. I like it. Also on, uh, you do Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff too, if they want to slide into your DMs there. Yep. Yep. That's me doing it all. All right. Or you can just go and sign up if you're, if you're chill with everything. Luke, what else you got? Uh, not a whole lot. I appreciate you having me on the show for sure. No, it's good stuff. I understand it more. It, I was, I'm one of those guys who's, I'm skeptical of all this stuff right off the hopper. You yep. know what I mean? I get it. I get it. I, I'm signing up. Do it. I appreciate it. All right, dude. Uh, you have a good day and uh, good luck fishing. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate it. All right. See ya. See ya, man. 
All right, that was Luke Schrader from Side Pop Fishing. Interesting dude. Uh, obviously, a numbers guy has head around it. And I just know based on building a website and having on the back end, he has put a lot of uh, sweat equity into this. So worth a shot. I like. I thought, his, I thought his stats and numbers were real interesting as far as the percentages and the paybacks. Uh, it's amazing to me. You've got thousands of guys who do this and who put their blood, sweat, tears, and hard-earned money into it, me included, and then aren't uh, – and then aren't up to date on like what where exactly their money is going. So, all right, we're going to take a final break of the show. When we come back, we have some time, some dates, some information on the Bassmaster Classic, which is rapidly approaching. Also, uh, the BPT back in action and the NPFL kicking off their third season on Pickwick. So we'll talk about all that stuff when we come back. It's Tuesday on BTL. We'll be back right after this. The great thing about the new Sensation Soft Plastics from Big Bite Baits, heavily scented, super soft, buoyant, comes in seven great new shapes. I've got a couple of them of my signature series, the Cliffhanger Worm and the Ramtail Craw. Great for a flipping jig, football jig, swim jig, all that. Several other great shapes. Really excited about it. We've worked over the last year. Catches fish all over the country, and I think it's going to catch fish for people everywhere you try it. The Spro Little John crankbait has been around for almost 15 years and it is one of my go-to crankbaits whenever I need a fish in the boat so you can never have enough new colors. That's why Spro is coming out with a handful of new colors including Pearl Shad which has this bleached out white look but it's got this pearlescent really really pretty. We've got Copper Shad which looks amazing in the water. It's got that purple flake on the back really really pops in the water. And then if you want some real pop, we've got Sparkle Shad, nothing but sparkles all over this thing. And then last but not least, we've got the Matte Sexy Shad, just a really different looking color for a crankbait. So you wanna give them a little different look, that Matte Sexy Shad is definitely the one to go with. All these colors are available in the original Little John and the MD. Have you considered purchasing new electronics for your rig? The type of mounts you choose to protect your investment should be part of the decision-making process. No matter if you prefer one, two, or three graphs up front, Beatdown Outdoors has a solution for you. Adjustable, versatile, rigid, and made in the USA. What's your ultimate electronic setup? Check out the full selection of Beatdown Outdoors products by visiting BeatdownOutdoors.com. Shoreline Boat and RV, dock rash, storm damage, collision repair, that deep scratch or gouge from trying to access that secret creek. Shoreline Boat and RV can get your prized possession back in mint condition and looking good on the water, fast. All repairs are done in-house, so they're able to get your boat or RV back to brand new, quickly. All Shoreline's work comes with a rock-solid warranty. Find out more at ShorelineBoatAndRV.com. Kansas City, Austin, and Tulsa. Having confidence in your tackle while on the water is one of the main things to success in my opinion. In the last couple of years with Denali, I've had just that. From anything from spinning rods, casting rods, tungsten products, even now to casting and spinning reels, I have the confidence to go out there and get the job done and know that all my equipment is gonna handle it and do it just the way I want it. The thing about Denali is you've got great quality products at a great price point, so make sure you check them out. I'm the kind of guy that never leaves a house without a pocket knife, and Gamagatsu's come out with the EDC series of knives. EDC stands for everyday carry, so whether you're on the water or off, you can always have it with you. The best thing about it to me is that assisted open feature. With this D2 blade, you've got it right here at your fingertips, so if you can't find your scissors, you need to cut a knot, you need to cut your braid, you've always got it. Make sure you check it out. Never leave home without your Gamagatsu EDC knife. Born in Japan, using technology, innovation, and precision, Sunline produces the widest selection of fishing lines at the most technologically advanced line factory in the world. Manufactured at the strictest tolerances to produce victories at the highest levels of tournament bass fishing, from household names like Christie, Swindle, and Cruz, to young guns like Cook, Logan, New, and Welcher, they all trust Sunline to take them to the top of the leaderboard. Choose the line that will give you the strength to guarantee your confidence. Sunline. All right, welcome back. Wrapping things up here on a Tuesday. 
BTL Luke Schrader from Side Pop Fishing. Thanks for jumping on. Uh, we have a lot of action coming up in the next week and a half. Kind of sandwiched between the two signature events in the sport, which would have been the Red Crest uh, on Lake Norman that just concluded uh, on Sunday. And the Bassmaster Classic that kicks off March 23rd through 25th. Folks, if you... Uh, I, I always like look up like this. So I have an at a glance 2023 yearly planner. If you want to make your life so much easier, get one of these things are like five foot by three foot each month. And then you get, uh, you get expo markers, like the dry erase markers, except I get the wet erase markers because then it actually stays on. Uh, and when you are filling it out, doesn't hit it with your palm, but take, uh, different colors for whatever different tournament trail you're fishing or you know whatever you have going on in your life but i can look at it and i've got like blue for the opens green for uh personal travel red for business travel which is like icast and the bassmaster classic and then like a different color for local tournaments i have it organized based on my travel days makes your life a lot easier then you just boom couple tacks put it up on the wall and for a tournament fisherman when someone's like hey man you want to jump in this tournament or you want to do this you just look at it and be like no man i'm on gray in that weekend or i'm traveling to icast in orlando that weekend uh for someone like me that's a little uh scatterbrained so to speak the at a glance 2023 yearly calendar from any of your uh office office depot home depot stores things is an absolute lifesaver. All right, the MPFL on Pickwick. Uh, that's kicking off this week. They're going to have a bunch of uh, a bunch of cool coverage with that with Fat Cat and uh, Luke Duncan. Interested to see how a smaller field size, higher first place payout uh, is going to turn out. And then also the BPT on Cherokee and Lake Norman. Uh, that should be a slugfest. We've seen uh, Cherokee get one a number of different ways earlier in this year. Small swim baits, Demiki rigs, spinner baits, uh, crank baits. So that is the 18th through the 23rd. So it will also be interesting to see how many of the BPT guys uh, get eliminated from that event and then just ease over to the Bassmaster Classic. I know there's some guys on the BPT that have major launches that are going on with maybe products or vessels uh, that they have had a major part in that are that are taking part of the Bassmaster Classic. As far as the Bassmaster Classic is concerned, uh, the, the one time that we do have knocked down is Brad Hallman and I will be at the Beatdown Outdoors booth at one o'clock on Saturday afternoon. And I think before that and after that, uh, Frank Scalish and I will be in the uh, Sunline booth. So I think it was like a conglomeration of, of like Sunline, Big Bite, Denali, Spro, that whole thing is going to be in like one big booth in the main hall. So uh, Saturday uh tomorrow or on thursday uh frank will have will have all that nailed down but definitely saturday at one brad Hallman and i will be in the beat down booth uh i there will not be any btl merchandise at the classic this year but i do want to show you something that just went live that i'm pretty excited about uh gotta pull up the website again and that would be the new saint jude fundraiser shirt uh that just went live this week with a hundred percent of the proceeds going to the dick highly saint jude bass classic last year the btl viewers and listeners really showed out and just through uh donations and t-shirt sales uh we did over five thousand dollars our goal this year is ten thousand uh we had the saint jude fundraiser last month in new prague minnesota at the gizen brower beer company uh, and a lot of btl and crappie chronicle fans came out to that raised almost uh, uh over four thousand dollars so our goal is to hit ten thousand uh i'll have adam on uh next week i know he's traveling he's actually in uh oklahoma now fishing the toyota series on grand but i'm i'm pretty pumped at how uh this year's shirt turned out you could actually uh purchase it now i don't have a link up to it you have to go through the uh, merchandise store but uh let me share the screen right here there it is 
the black with the green. It's got the uh, the sideway or the bass into deal. It says bass fishing saves lives with the BTL and the St. Jude logo. Like I said, you guys did an amazing job. 100% of the proceeds here go to uh, St. Jude. And that it's just a it's a really good, really good nonprofit to work with. There's also available in green with the bass fishing saves lives, but we went a little bit bigger, a little bit bolder, has the BTL logo on it. It's a, a really soft quality cotton tee, $24.95. So uh, that will run uh, through the end of April, but donation wise, it's a 4.3 out 60, 40 combined spun cotton polyester tearaway label on it so i was super pumped to see that go live and then i'll have more about that so tomorrow special show uh still working on the morning show because you've got a lot of guys that are getting ready for events or practicing on for the bpt which takes out a lot of the uh red crest interviews but 8 p.m central time 8 p.m central time tomorrow the man the myth the legend the guy who went out on lake ufala and posted on his Instagram, caught like a 15 pound limit in his first six casts. Did not catch one on the first cast and then went quality, 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 quality. Ben Milliken will be geared up. He said he will have hot takes on his first Bassmaster Open. You can watch it on his YouTube channel, uh, the first portion of it. But uh, he's going to be a part of BTL as the year progresses, along with Miles Berghoff, along with a number of, uh, uh, along with Bobby Lane and Ish, and a number of different anglers. But uh, tomorrow, BTL at night, 8 p.m. Central Time, Ben Milliken talking about his first Bassmaster Open experience, uh, and then also a regularly scheduled show at 8.30 a.m., and then Frank on Thursday. So uh, that's all we got for today. Interesting show. A little bit of a business show. We'll talk to everybody tomorrow. See ya.